Uh, I am Ilka. I'm uh, one of the co-hosts of uh, CMX Connect Istanbul. And uh, Jaren and Esra are also with us. They are my co-hosts uh, of our chapter and they're, in, they're going to be present in the chat. So please hey, say hi to them. And of course, uh, you're always you know, welcome to say hi to me and to Katie as well. So just like any event, any CMX Connect event, uh, we are going to make a small presentation about the CMX Connect program. And of course, uh, you know, a bit, uh, tell a little bit more about our uh, guest and our event for the day in case there's people joining us for the first time and encountering cmx um program and the, the cmx chapters for the first time if you are welcome welcome and if you're not and if you know us already welcome as well so uh, allow me to share my screen i'm sure you've heard uh, this sentence so many times Just sharing the uh presentation. So I hope everybody sees. Um, uh, unfortunately, um, there's some setting uh, problems with uh, with very screen sharing. So uh, the uh, presentation is going to appear slightly smaller than the actual um, uh, capacity of your screens. But hopefully, uh, it will be you know big enough for you to be uh, able to follow. So today uh, we are going to be um, uh, hosting uh, an event about uh, starting a community from scratch, where we are going to have Katie Ray as our guest, uh, which we're very excited about. So um, uh, just before that, let me just you know, present you uh, the CMX Connect program and uh, about the event for today. So uh, you've shared, uh, you've uh, joined through uh, the Bevy interface. Um, uh, which is uh, the parent company of uh, CMX. So CMX Connect is uh, a network of chapters, which we'll tell you a little bit more about. Um, we do have some guidelines, just like any event. So be sure your camera is turned on, close any distracting applications, use the chat box on the right-hand side of the screen to ask questions and leave comments, and grab your favorite snack or drink, of course. So these are just some guidelines. We'd love you to uh, to follow. And of course, just above everything, um, it would be really, really cool and great. So if you just say hi in the chat and uh, of course, tell us uh, where you're connecting from because this is uh, a global event, even though we're based in Istanbul. And uh, of course, you know, interact with uh, the hosts and uh, the guests and uh, basically just ask us any questions that you might have uh, with regards to, uh, to, the, to the things that we're going to be discussing tonight. So um, the CMX Connect program is over 60 chapters. Um, it's actually much more than that right now. That's an, that's an old figure, but there are chapters based all around the world and uh, they're even more active. So uh, since the start of the pandemic, but everything is shifted to online. And of course, we're using uh, the, this platform, the Bevy platform to its full extent to be able to deliver you some really cool uh, community management oriented content. So please do check uh, the other chapters in your area or, um, you know, or, set, or organizing events uh, which are interesting to you. And of course, uh, do uh, give us uh, a follow and a like uh, on our social media and of course uh, on our official chapter page. So um, we do have some goals as part of the CMX Connect um, program, which is um, which are the, the meeting one awesome person. So hopefully you'll meet more than one. Um, learn one actionable thing you can implement today. So there's going to be plenty. And uh, advocate, of course, uh, we would love you to uh, support our program to grow the community industry. It's a young industry. It's uh, at the very moment, it's a small industry, but it's so important and so crucial, especially these days, uh, which we're going to talk a little bit more about in this event and in any event. The Ximix Istanbul, it is the only city on planet Earth where two continents meet. If you have not been, um, we'd strongly encourage you to, uh, to do so. So uh, it's right at the meeting uh, point of, uh, of uh, Europe and Asia. And uh, I am basically uh, talking to you from Europe, if you like, which is uh, a common joke here in Turkey. Um, but of course, it's a massive city, an important city. It used to be the center of the world, so to speak, um, some time ago. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, we've been around as a CMX Connect chapter since September 2020, and we've done some really cool events. 
We do have some goals. These are slightly um, separate and slightly different from the CMX program goals because we're the only community uh, of community professionals in Turkey. Um, so we actually uh, try to be the Turkey's leading platform of community management. We're thinking of uh, becoming the leading resource and network for all community managers, professional, whether you're just starting or you're experienced. And of course, to be the first port of call uh, for organizations looking for community professionals and to advocate for community management as a profession. Something very similar to uh, the actual CMX uh, program goals as well. But these are the things that we are uh, trying to achieve as CMX Connect Istanbul. So um, this is the link that you can actually follow. This is the many link, uh, let's say platform where we have gathered all our uh, resources that we're producing for you on community management, including our social media links and um, something that we're very proud of, which is our medium channel where we are trying to produce um, one, at least one uh, piece of content every month without fail uh, on community management in Turkish and service. And at this very moment, it is the only um, only platform, only channel producing regularly, um, producing community management content regularly in that language. So if you do speak the language, if you're interested, certainly, um, you know, stop by. Translate works very well as well. Uh, we do produce a lot of original content too. So, um, you know, give us some feedback. Certainly, um, you know, tell us what you think through, um, you know, all the channels that we are currently active on. We've done a number of events. So since 2020, we haven't, you know, we haven't, uh, we haven't been sitting around and just doing nothing. There's been so many really cool events. And if you've been to any of them, uh, thanks again for uh, your, uh, your repeat visit. And uh, basically, we've uh, had so many um, really, really cool uh, guests, uh, local and international. So uh, we had uh, people from Wix, Edu was with us. And of course, we had a number of uh, collaborations with the other chapters as well, um, including um, the latest one that we actually had with uh, the CMX Connect LA chapter. And that was uh, quite recent. And previously, we celebrated our first birthday in September with, um, with Beth McIntyre, who is now heading all things community at CMX. And of course, we've uh, hosted the great John O'Bacon, who's a community celebrity, and uh, we were able to listen to um, uh, what he had to say about his new book um, in September 2021. So we were also active in a number of events, and these are uh, some conferences that we were active as co-hosts, as contributors. So um, Spark was uh, the very first EMEA-oriented uh, community management conference. And of course, we have the summit, the CMX Rise Summit, which was in a hybrid fashion last year. So hopefully it will be in person this year, pending, of course, uh, safety, security and a number of other things. But um, it was one of the biggest uh, events that we actually took part. And uh, there were thousands of community professionals which we were able to meet um, even virtually face to face through uh, this, uh, our contribution to this event. So your hosts, three of uh, whom are here. So it's me um, and Esra and Jaren are uh, in the chat. And uh, Özge is not with us today. She's uh, unfortunately not going to be able to make it for the day. But it's the four of us that run the chapter. And uh, we produce uh, all the things that you have seen um, between us. And uh, I'm immensely proud about the, um, uh, about the, 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 the contribution and uh, all the great efforts that uh, my co-hosts are putting. So please do say hi to them uh, if uh, you are uh, seeing them, if you spot them in uh, the audience. And let's go, uh, let's talk a little bit more about today's event. And we are uh, in the presence of some community celebrities, some community royalty. I really look up to Katie and um, uh, Katie is such a, a, a great uh, friend. And of course, such a great professional, a great peer, um, a great colleague in, in projects and, and everything. So uh, I am so happy that she's uh, decided to to say yes uh, to our event. And uh, uh, she's done some amazing things at Sales Hacker and now at Clary, and she's heading the community over there. And uh, she's been selected, she's uh, received the, uh, the, the great accolade of, accolade of being the CMXer of the year 2022. So if you don't know, CMX actually hosts yearly awards 
of uh, the community industry. And uh, Katie's been awarded with being the CMXer of the year. And um, that's just something really, really cool because uh, CMX has got some of the best community professionals around the world. So um, therefore, whatever Katie is going to be sharing is going to be um, you know, quite relevant, quite golden, quite important. So um, if you have any questions about starting a community, which is uh, what we're going to be talking about today, uh, you are in very, very good hands. So please make sure that you, you fire away all the questions that you have in your mind. And uh, I am absolute, in absolute awe of uh, the knowledge, the, uh, the experience, and the great positive energy that Katie has. So uh, we uh, are going to be more than happy to answer all your questions. So I'm going to be stopping uh, my screen going back to uh, the uh, event itself. And I'm going to be calling Katie up so that we can start our event. So Katie, come on up. And uh, I'm going to be enabling the presenter mode for her. And in the meantime, uh, if you have any questions, the Q&A tab is open on the right-hand side on the top. And uh, please do make sure that you have all your questions. Katie, hello. Hey everyone, how's it going? Happy uh, Wednesday, Wednesday, happy Wednesday. This is one of those weeks where every day has felt like a Monday so far and we're only at Wednesday. So it's uh, it's been something special, needless to say. It doesn't happen like that quite frequently, but this is something I've been looking forward to. So this is definitely one of the highlights of my week. So thank you, Ilker and everyone for asking me to be a part of this. Um, yeah, this is something, honestly, whenever Ilker asked about this topic, I said, oh my gosh, you know, I almost had to have a little bit of a reflective moment because if I think about where I was this time last year, I think I was just having conversations with Ilker of what do I want my next steps to look like? Is community really my thing? Like, is this something I should keep investing in? And, um, we had done so much at sales hacker and, he was just so encouraging. I was like, let's, let's do this. And so I had started to kind of put some feelers out and, um, it really wasn't until November, obviously that I made a big transition, but wanted to learn a little bit about head of communities and leading communities and building them. And, um, just like so many of us, we have those roles where we think maybe we could do what the person above us is doing maybe a little bit better. Now I will say I was very fortunate. Colin Campbell, I work for him at Sales Hacker. He is one of the best managers I've ever had. If you ever have an opportunity to work for him, you are so lucky because he just gives you so much confidence, really enables you to be successful. But I wanted to do what he did and I wanted to help others feel that way as well. So Luckily, it came to Clary, and uh, we are building a community. We are getting ready for launch. So this was a very, very timely conversation. So um, like many of you see in the chat, if you have any questions, throw them in there. If you know me, you know I will answer everything very transparently, open, honestly, the good, the bad, everything in between and outside of those two as well. So um, make sure you drop them in the chat. We'll get to them in real time. Um, I always try to do that unless it's something I can ask at the end. So with all of that. As you can see, yeah, exactly. So you can <laughs> see, I mean, Katie and, Katie and I, of course, you know, we go way back and, you know, there's been mm -hmm. uh, way back to the support of each other so much uh, through our sort of career transitions and the new challenges that we actually faced. And um, we just, it wasn't always, you know, obvious the path that we, we wanted to take. So this is the, uh, the common thing. This is a quite common thing between community professionals. So again, you are in excellent hands. So please do make sure that you ask the questions and we will do our best to answer them. But uh, Katie, it's such a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to, uh, you know, to, to do something together uh, in terms of these events and these sorts of collaborations and everything. Thank you so much on behalf of CMX Connect Istanbul and all the, um, the attendees, all the people who've uh, made time uh, for this event. So what I'm going to do is uh, Katie has kindly prepared a short presentation uh, just to gather her thoughts about you know, the things that we're actually talking about today. And hopefully they are going to be sparking some uh, interesting questions from you. We've got some of our own as well. 
So uh, I'm going to leave uh, the stage to uh, to Katie, and once the, once the uh, the presentation is done, I'm going to come back up, and then we're going to do what we can with the questions. So um, thanks very much, Katie. Um, take it away; it's all yours. Awesome. Thank you, Ilker. Once again, thank you to the CMX Istanbul team. This is always so much fun for me. Um, so if you have ever been on a webinar with me, you know, I am a lot of excitement, a lot of information, a lot of everything all the time. Um, and so I require that from you. I am going to be asking questions, come and throw your answers in the chat. If you have any questions yourself, you drop them in the chat as well. Like I said, I'll answer them in real time. Um, so first things first, how many of you are either about to start building your community or going through platform evaluations, or just kind of want to get an idea of what this type of community management looks like. I would love to see in a chat through any type of emoji, any yes, anything in the chat. Awesome. Yes, Jen, I know you've been working on that awesome project. Awesome. Okay, so we've got a few folks. Anyone else? I know that there's a bunch more responses. Come on, you can toss them in here. Managing a community and launching a new one. That's a lot to have on your plate. Um, awesome. Bringing in, this is awesome. Okay, great. Love to see that. So this is a really good baseline for me to get started. So whenever we were looking at, do we have a community or should we launch one? One of the things that I had to learn at Clary was um, what community efforts are currently being in are currently in place or are being discussed about in some form or fashion. Um, now I did have a presentation for this. I'm just gonna use that on my side as notes, but I always think it's a little bit more fun to do it this way. So we're gonna keep it, like I said, a little casual. Um, so whenever we were looking at Clary of what we wanted to do, they brought me on knowing that they wanted to have a community. In fact, they brought me on knowing that they did have a Slack community, but it hadn't really been given a lot of love and one-on-one -on -one attention for about a year and a half. And so whenever I came on, we had to look at everything that was happening in Slack or what wasn't happening in Slack. We had to look at who was owning it, who was owning other community initiatives, where we would sit, what this would look like. And some of the conversations we had were a little tough. Um, and what I mean by that is whenever you're evaluating whether you should have a community, you have to ask yourself, do we even need this? Do we need this, right? Um, that can be really, really tough because that could be the make or break on whether or not you have a job. And obviously that's very scary. And there are many times in this experience since November to now where I, and Jen knows this, I'm like very open about how sometimes I cry. I love my job. I love what I do. And sometimes it's emotionally tolling and sometimes you just have to cry. Um, but I would sit down and just cry on the couch with my, my amazing husband and just say, I am so scared because I need them to actually answer this. I need my company to say, we need a community. Here's why we need this. And like actually have that support. And I have to be vulnerable enough to say, if you don't need a community, let's not do one. That's not going to be the best use of resources or of budget, right? We don't just do it because everyone else is doing it, right? I feel like a little mom. I'm not a mom, but this is what my mom always used to say. If everyone would jump off the bridge, would you do that as well? that's something you have to have the conversation about with your teams now because everyone's doing community <laughs> so everyone thinks we all should do it right so that was a very difficult conversation to have because i could be talking them out of having me as an employee and that's very scary but you have to get that ownership that buy-in that almost respect of we need a community and here's why and what's really cool about that conversation that you're going to have is while it could be very scary, you are able to see how they view community. You're able to see who can be your executive sponsor, who's going to align with your vision, mission, goals, and values, right? And you're able to kind of plan around those people. You know who's going to be on your team supporting you and who you may have to kind of 
walk on some eggshells around and figure that dynamic out. So you learn a lot. So as we get started, do we need a community? Now, the second question is one of my favorite things. Is there a budget? I'm sure many of you hear about this all the time. Um, we have this conversation because it is so incredibly important. Nothing's worse than getting everyone so excited about this amazing community, and all these initiatives, and we want to put our customers first, and we want to help people, and like all this amazing stuff. And you get so invested in this, right? Emotionally, you're like, this is amazing. I'm doing something and, and working on something that's going to make a difference, right? But then you find out you have no budget. That can be incredibly difficult. So figuring out, is there a budget? Um, some of the things that have helped me with those conversations is doing a little bit of prep work. And what I mean by prep work is spending some time talking with other community managers, doing some Googling, being the Googliest on Google, um, and trying to find what should my first year's worth of expenses be. Um, that to me is huge, right? It It's not awesome whenever you go up to your manager and say, hey, I want to do this. Will you pay for it? And they say, how much is it? And you're like, meh, could be 30,000, could be 100,000. <laughs> you're most likely not going to get a great response from that. Um, and you may have lost that one shot that you had to ask for that money. So take the time, do some research, Google around, talk with other managers and come up with what I did was a good, better, best scenario. So I said, good community platforms. Here's these two and here's their cost estimates. Here's what we get. Better platforms, cost estimates. Here's what we get. Best platforms, cost estimates. Here's what we get. Um, and then my recommendation, whenever you do this, this is kind of like an old sales technique. You want to anchor. Actually, we talk about this a lot in negotiations is anchoring. So we want to anchor with the best being like the craziest number. So you find the most expensive platform at a hundred thousand a year or, um, one that requires a lot of dev work. So it's, you know, 60 for the platform and then another 50 or 70,000 a year for development work and you anchor. So anything less than that looks awesome. Um, but then you also anchor the, le the good option as one that you probably don't want because it's not going to have a lot of functionality, um, depending on your needs, right? So you can kind of position where you want this and bring that to the table of saying, here's what we look at, here's our recommendation, right? So with budget, you wanna be prepared. You wanna show that you've done your research. Um, in Before the Lock, Fever B and CMX has a lot of really great research and some documents that can help you with some of this stuff as well. So check those resources out whenever you're looking. Um, and whenever you find out if there's a need for community and if you have budget, you will be finding out if there's support for these initiatives. So having support is so pivotal when you're launching a community. If you agree, I would love seeing the chat if you agree. If you disagree, show me in the chat that no, you don't agree because it's a good conversation. Having support is so important. Think about you're trying to start a new exercise regimen and you have no support. You know, you're just hoping this is it. I'm going to get fit. This is the one. Um, and you, you do it for a few days, right? And then you're just kind of like, Ugh, but we're going to go party on the weekend and I'm not going to do my morning workouts. I told myself I was, but let's be real. I'm probably not going to. It's really, really tough without that support. Same thing inside of a company. As we all know, there's always red tape. You are always going to need an advocate to help push things through, right? Um, there's a great infographic, um, and I think it's on like one of those really silly ones that were like in our elementary school nurse's office that were like motivation, and then a picture of someone hiking up a mountain. Um, but I, I, what I picture is um, pushing a rock uphill and having a whole team of people help push you, pushing that rock. Um, I, I think the same thing with community. You have to have that support, whether it be internal um, support to help you with those internal initiatives, external, like the CMX Istanbul crew, or really anyone in those community 
communities, um, you need to have that support because it's going to be tough. And we oftentimes love community because we get to help others and we get to help build relationships and we get to make other people's lives easier. At least that's what I love about community. Um, we don't do it because it's an easy job. It is not. Um, but there's a lot of things that we get out of it. So just remember, we need that support, internal and external. And then another thing to consider as we look at if we should have this community is do we have a dedicated focus or a dedicated team? Now, this is going to be my little interactive. If you have more than yourself on your community team, please type it in the chat, how many people you have on your team. If it's just yourself, just put one. If it's more, include yourself in that count. Um, I am a team of one. It is really tough. Um, many of us are oftentimes a team of one. Yeah, as we're seeing in the chat, most of us are a team of one. Back to that support. Welcome to your support group. We are all here because we are all a team of one and we love community. Um, it, is, it is really tough. Um, oh, lucky you've got three. That's either a 32 or a three piece sign, whichever, very jealous. <laughs> um, and so make sure if we have that need for community, there's the money to help support it. Their support to support the initiatives. Um, and we have some level of dedication. Now, I do want to back up because sometimes community, we may not have the budget for it. Just remember, community isn't because of a platform. Community is because we're bringing people together that have the same type of interests, that want to move forward in some form or fashion. Whatever is that little nugget of that's that tie that's going to bring people together. That's what community is, at least for me, right? Um, so if you don't have the budget, I wouldn't worry about it. If, if your goal is to do local meetups and have local groups and we go to dinners and we do this and we call it the ladies who lunch club and we do lunch every third Thursday of the month at a cool new place. That's building community, that's building relationships, that's connecting with people, that doesn't require a platform. So for those of you who don't always have that budget, like, please remember, you do not necessarily have to have it to have a successful community. Um, so yeah, definitely keep that in mind because as we look at building community, and this is a conversation to have as well whenever you're starting this off is, who, who are we building this for? Why does this matter? Who is this for? And so the four questions I gave you, do we need a community? Is there a budget? Is there support? And do we have a dedicated focus or team? Is going to be, your answers are going to be dependent on who the community is for. Good example, I'm building a customer community. So for me, it's super helpful to have a good platform with true federated search so I can search anything and everything and my customers can always find answers to any questions that they have. So that's a really good example. Ladies who lunch, you may not need a platform, but that doesn't make you any less of a community or any less successful. Um, I'm trying to remember, there was a woman I spoke with a while ago and she was amazing. She was so cool. And what I loved about our conversation is she didn't, she's in a very high up community role, like a VP of community or something like that. And um, how it started was her hosting events for folks interested in like a certain topic. I wish I could remember who it was. Um, and and because of that experience of years and years of planning events and building relationships with these people and planning more community focused events, um, she's like a VP of community at um, like a big security ish type comp, like legal ish type company. Um, I wish I could remember her name, but it was amazing. It was amazing because it's just such a great reminder that community isn't just 
that platform. Um, it's about the conversations and relationships. And let's face it, we've all seen community platforms that are not active, that are not lively, that are most <laughs> than likely not building relationships or facilitating those conversations. So just keep that in mind. If you don't have that budget for it, I wouldn't stress, but that there's also really good free resources as well if you did want to go down that path. So we've gone through our beginning questions of should we even do this? Platform evaluation. So if you've decided that you need a community platform, this is one of the funnest and most frustrating times that you might have. Um, platform evaluations. One of the most important parts as you go through this phase is making sure that you have the appropriate team a part of the conversations. So what I mean by that is you don't need to have every person and their mother, brother, sister, dog, and cat to be a part of the conversation. You do not need every person's input. Um, in fact, it can be even more detrimental because of that. Um, I would highly, highly, highly encourage folks to actually make a governance doc that shows uh, what you need and how I would do. I wouldn't start by listing people. I would start by listing needs and talking with other community managers if this is your first time and asking for who did you want to have a part of this conversation, right? You'll need your IT team because they're going to help you with integrations. You'll need your Salesforce admin if that's your CRM and you want to integrate your platform into it. You're going to need the product team because there's going to be some needs around if you want your customers to be able to access your platform through the inside of the actual app that they own, that they bought, if you want them to see it on the website, you're going to need your support team because more than not, they're probably already doing some type of initiative to get customer support and feedback. So you're going to want to partner with them on that. Um, you're going to need your design team. Honestly, the design team was the most difficult part for me. Um, I am not a creative. I do not do well with that. Um, I picked this <laughs> color paint for my wall and I thought it was pretty and now I can't stand it. So being a creative is not something that works for me. So whenever I, ch I chatted with the design team months ago to kind of put it on the radar, um, I had no, I had no idea. I was like, make it look pretty, make it look inviting, fun, slightly different, um, and that was what I gave them and thank heavens that they were awesome because <laughs> I'm not a design person. Um, and as you'll see, you'll kind of need to get into more different cadences with different teams and get them involved, um, to go through that process. So you've got to find out who's going to be a part of the governance committee. And you also need to set up cadences that you'll be checking in with them in addition to how much involvement you want them to have. If you do not set this expectation at the very beginning, it's going to be really, really, really tough to come back in and say, hey, I know you've been deciding to send me daily updates of things that you think we should have in the community. Um, please don't do that. Here's an intake form. I actually did that. I did this. Uh, we had an amazing employee and she was sending lots and lots of advice and different things. And I wasn't even at a stage where I could implement it. We didn't even have a platform yet. And we were still working on the strategy. And I actually sent an intake form out and said, hey, if you have any community advice, I do want to hear it. Because I do. I want. I do care. And I do want to hear it. But I can't do everything right away the first time. So I had an intake form and I wish I would have gone at the very beginning and said like, this is the requirements. This is what I need from you and kind of set that expectations. And whenever you start dealing with executives, um, I would say like directors and up, they love this because they want to know how involved do you want them to be? They are so busy. So if you just want them to give the green light on things, like they love that. That's awesome. So just think about that as you're building your governance of this community. And as you go into platform evaluations, everyone's going to have their own opinion. Everyone's going to have their bias towards certain brands. They may not even know why, um, but just be prepared for that. Um, and be prepared to jump through some extra hoops that you may not have needed to originally that have now just come up 
um, because somebody spoke with somebody who had worked under or next to the community team at a different company 12 years ago. So just be prepared. Like there's going to be those obstacles and those conversations. Um, but I just encourage you make it all about the data, the usability, and really who this is all for. If it's for customers, make it about the customers, make it about their journey, make it about making it as easy as possible for them. Um, one of the most important things with platform evals is, well, one that's really fun is sometimes they'll send you like swag and gift boxes to get your business. So that's always really cool. Um, so look out for those opportunities. It's really fun. Um, but when you get to the very end, please remember you are dealing with people I understand that their job is to be a salesperson. And as a salesperson, I tried really hard to be respectful of this process for the sales reps we were working with, because I, I understand what it's like for them. Um, I tried very hard to give weekly updates as best as I could, where I could, we had a lot of internal hangups. Um, and so I, I just wanted to respect their time as well. Um, and so I wanted to communicate, hey, we still needed some approvals. They decided to loop somebody else in, all that. Most of your companies will probably have procurement processes already in, in place, so you won't have to worry about that. But just think about that because um, it's it can really be a bear and it can be very discouraging for you as well. Um, I definitely hit that moment of, I don't know if this is ever going to happen. I have no clue um, I am hoping and praying that it will, but I'm very concerned that it may not happen. Um, and in those moments of desperation, just be reminded that it'll move forward and it doesn't have to move quickly. Um, and once you go through platform evaluation, then you'll be able to start doing platform onboarding. And depending on who your vendor is, they usually have like launch planning steps already laid out. So they'll be like in four to six weeks, you could do this, or you could spread it out if you wanted to. Um, or like we went with Insided and they were amazing. We have a whole Asana task board of every single thing that we have to have set up, all the links and um, resources, who should be a part of those conversations. I mean, it's just been outstanding. Um, and one of the things that has been very instrumental and how we're getting the community set up at Clary is, um, and I heard this on the In Before the Lock podcast a couple weeks back about building an executive deck, um, was talking about how from the very beginning, you need to make it incredibly clear that this community is a part of the backbone of the company and that this community is for everyone in the company and that the support is needed from everyone in the company. And so as you're building out your launch plans, do many roadshows, have a deck. I have a deck. It's like 60 slides. It's very horrible. I try to not show people <laughs> and just let people look at it because it is a mess. Um, but what I do is I hide certain slides or I'll pull from it depending on what team I'm speaking to and how um, I try to have my slides presented is how um jessica who i'm reporting i've got my boss and her boss um and and how she framed it was you want to make sure that if someone was just looking at this presentation without you speaking they would know pretty much the gist and would only have like minimal questions and so i try really hard to build my slides around that um so with your launch planning, leverage the resources. And even during platform evals, talk to them about the support that they're going to be providing for you during your launch planning, um, because that's going to be very pivotal. And for those it's who's it's the first time, this is my first time of actually building a community. I've consulted on a few um, that hasn't been geared around building uh, from scratch. It's been more about like, hyper intensifying the engagement or the awareness or growing membership. And so what I'm learning, this is all stuff that I'm learning in real time as well through conversations um, and through my personal experiences. So whenever you look at the launch planning, any resources you can find from trusted 
sources, of course, um, is going to be incredibly valuable to you. So do some research. Um, like I said, there's been a lot of names I've dropped today. If you want to DM me on LinkedIn, I can help find resources with you as well or, or point you to the right direction. Um, but, but do some research. Um, for those of us that are teams of one, this can be a really tough time because we feel so pressured to rush. Do not fall into that pressure. And at the end of this, I actually have a list of like common mistakes and we can kind of talk through that, but don't fall into the pressure. Um, I had a meeting with someone a couple months ago and he was like, oh, so when are you going to get the community set up? And I said, it's probably going to take like four to six weeks because that's what the launch plan timeline was. And then to actually go live because we're doing a phased beta approach. I was like, but to actually go live, it's probably gonna be two, maybe two and a half months. And he was so shocked. I I thought he was like very upset with my answer because he's like, well, this should be a, a lot faster. He's not someone I report to. He's on the opposite side of the org from me. Um, but I just giggled and I said, look, I'm a team of one. I can only do so much. And that's whenever... <laughs> That's whenever I said, hey, if if you would like to allocate some of your budget to my team, I would love to hire somebody to work with me on this. So there's going to be opportunities for people to be, uh, I don't want to say like nasty, but they're just uneducated on how the community launch and building process works. And so you have an opportunity to educate them and then win them onto your side to get that help. Um, I've spoken with lots of different teams since I'm at org and a lot of them are like, can we do this? Can we do this? I'm like, I love these ideas. I wish, I wish we could do this, but as a person of one, I don't have the bandwidth and I'm just doing the best I can to get this set up. And so it's always um, a fun conversation where I say, but if you would like to send one of your team members over, that would be awesome. And that, and then people are like, oh no, we don't want to have to do it, but we want you to do it faster. <laughs> and so, so that's always really funny. And I was just on a call before this and we talked a lot about this and um, I will say through all the conversations I've had within my company, I've been made aware of some really amazing resources. Um, our rev devs, like SDRs, BDR team, they have this program called the 10%. And so some of our like top performing SDR BDRs uh, will actually have the ability to spend 10% of their time. If their numbers don't drop, right? Um, they have 10, the option to spend 10% of their time within different parts of the organization working on like four to six week long projects. Um, so for me, I was like, oh, this is amazing. Like I can get some interns. This is fabulous. I love this. Um, but if you don't have something like that, feel free to mention it. Take this idea. I think it's brilliant. Um, but once again, like build it all out before you go and approach people about it. Um, or you can do what my husband and I, we call it, <laughs> this sounds horrible, planting the seed. And so we'll kind of say, oh, what do you think of this idea? And, um, kind of like, we're just planting the seed, just getting you to like, start thinking about this and then we'll follow up in two weeks. Um, and so we just like to have those conversations with folks and get an idea of, um, their willingness on supporting some of these, uh, objectives that we have. And you can put a little sales hat on and make sure it aligns to their objectives, but just a few things to kind of think about uh, with launch planning is people are going to rush you. They're going to want things done so much faster, um, but you're, it's okay to push back. It's okay to say, hold on a second. Um, but then it's also okay to put some of the ownership on them. Um, you have your governance team. And if there's people outside of that, definitely put ownership on them and say, Hey, like we, we, we need your support on this. And if this is going to be successful and if y'all truly still believe that this is, you know, why we need a community, like we talked about at the beginning of this conversation, then like have that conversation with them. Um, so like I mentioned with our launch planning, we are doing a tiered beta launch. It is one of the best things that I think we could have done. Um, and I've got a few different reasons why. One, with my betas, they have helped me identify different problems 
that I wouldn't have seen otherwise because I'm not going through the normal onboarding like all my other members are. So they're able to say, hey, <laughs> this link isn't working. Or if I come here, it's making me log back in. Or I have to authenticate, but the authentication email is going to spam. So I don't see it. And that's something I have to fix internally. And so you'll have lots of things come up, but do not be disheartened by it. Instead, respond to their emails and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, our first beta was our community founders team. And those were about 10 to 15 folks that were either nominated by their CSM, so customer success manager, or they were self-nominated through a community survey. We wanted to keep it small. We wanted to have it be a very positive experience for them. Uh, because of their involvement, they're getting some super cool Yeti cups. Um, <laughs> Probably should have said that because they haven't arrived yet. So let's just keep that on the hush hush until you see this video. Um, they're going to be getting access to our highest rank in our gamification strategy called Club Clary, where they get to be a part of like different luncheons and dinners and thought leadership events that are very, very exclusive. Um, but these, they're just things that we feel based off of what they said was important to them were ways that we could reward them and just say thank you for their help. So uh, as we look at your launch strategy, we can definitely think of different ways to go about how to get the first people in into your community. With us, we really wanted betas to come and fix um, and, and make us aware of any bugs that we needed to fix. But also, I wanted to walk through, and I literally, I did two community founders onboarding calls where I had them all walk through registering with me, adding their profile picture, starting um, their first conversation and introducing themselves because I wanted them to get comfortable with those motions so that whenever we added more and more folks, they already saw what the positive behaviors were and were easy. It was a lot easier for them to replicate. So that's kind of how we're doing it. We just did community founders. We just opened up our MIA private group inside of our community. And so we've got a handful of folks in there. Uh, and then we'll be like slowly adding more and more as we get going. And then we'll have a big launch next month, hopefully, <laughs> pending SSO configuration. Um, and then we get to big launch. So there's a few different schools of thoughts around this. And if you listen to the In Before Lock podcast, they talk a lot about this. Um, I have been reading a book, trying to find it. It's called Play Bigger. And it talks all about lightning strikes and how you want to have like this huge lightning strike of an event and then little lightning strike, little ripple clouds, all sorts of stuff, right? Um, it's actually a really fun title. I wish I could find it. It's really fun. Um, but it, it's a really, it's big software companies. That's how they use their strategies for big launches. And so, um, I love looking at that. And so once we get to launch, you want to make a splash in some form or fashion. Uh, once again, it's all dependent on who is this community for, is it for customers? Is it for peers? You name it. You just plan for them. Um, we, had initially wanted to launch at one of our conferences. We've had um, some delays on that planning. And so we shifted, but then we had some technical delays. And so we're shifting again. Um, if you haven't caught, there's a, a theme running through this whole conversation and it's be flexible because <laughs> everything will shift. Um, and so when you plan launch, there's lots of ways that you can get people excited about it. You can do social posts, you can do swag giveaways, you can do a pre-registration. One of the communities I'm consulting on, um, we are rewarding like 20 of our pre-reg um, community members with basically press kits and swag and giveaways that they will then be able to share on launch day in hopes of getting more members through them. Um, and so there's lots of different ways and different strategies. My number one thing is talk to your design team and talk to your marketing at the same time. Figure out what they have. A lot of times they have so many events and launches and updates and you name it already planned. Um, and so, sorry, you saw I just spit. Um, and so if you 
don't talk to them, chances are you're going to plan something on a date that they can't do. And so you won't have that support from them. And once again, as a team of one, it's really tough to do without their support. So, um, and then since we're kind of running out of time, I know there's questions on here. Some of the common mistakes, um, and I guess before I get to that, if any of you ever want to talk about any of this stuff or pick my brain, like just message me on any of the community slacks or on LinkedIn. Um, I'm always here to chat and I know many of you I have chatted with in the past, so don't hesitate to reach out. But um, some of the pitfalls that you should try and avoid, once again, don't rush. This is incredibly hard. Um because there's always a sense of urgency that you always need to be producing something. Um, I know for myself, I have struggled with feeling like if I wasn't producing something that I could show that I, maybe they would think I wasn't doing my job. Um, that was a horrible habit that I got ingrained into me from sales. And so I just hope that none of you have that problem. Um, because then you'll just be working all the time like I do. And so um, don't rush. And another thing is don't not push back, okay? You are hired for your expertise. You are hired for your experience. If you don't have experience, you are hired for so many other reasons that you can bring into this conversation is you are you have the option to push back. Obviously, be respectful. Don't be rude about it or condescending or arrogant. But there were a lot of times, once again, to that example of that gal that I worked with, where I said, I love these ideas, but I can't implement them right now. If you could put them in this intake sheet, then we can kind of work through them and prioritize, right? That's pushing back. It's not rude, um, but it's also creating processes with it. So Another thing to remember whenever you're pushing back is considering what that purpose is. Um, at Sales Hacker, we tried really, really hard of, of making sure any type of community program we did aligned with our vision, mission, values. And it was really cool because if it didn't, we said no. Um, did we lose sponsorship because of that? Yes. Um, but working for a company where you can say, we would love to partner if it's like this, this, and this, and if not, then unfortunately we can't, um, it's a really, really cool opportunity. So push back where it needed, confirm what the purpose is, if it aligns and figure out timelines. You know, you want to make sure you understand like, what are their expectations? Um, I, met, I met with some product guys last week and they want to do some community stuff. And I was like, yeah, here's a perfect avenue. I would love this. And then I figured out a little bit more and we started talking a little bit more about their timelines and realized that just wasn't something we could do right now, but that's okay. Um, also getting the right type of support. Like I said earlier with the governance, you really want to figure out who's going to be the people that you should have involved. Who's going to be the folks that you need to say yes and give final approval. And if you don't need that, then you probably shouldn't have them a part of every single conversation that happens. Um, another thing to consider is not getting enough feedback from people who the community is for. So once again, everything you do with this should be to align with your company's goals and your member goals. Um, in David Spinks, the business of belonging, he talks about, I think it's like three levels of goals that you create and you create like what your business goals are, what the member goals are and like personal goals or something. Um, I actually have it doggy tagged or whatever. It's the page is folded because it was so important <laughs> to me, even though I can barely remember. But um, I actually created a slide that had those three tiers on it because I knew how important that was. So with all that said, I know that there are so many questions. So I'm just going to jump into that here. And the first one from Hannah uh, do you have a weekly cadence, cadence of task management to handle all the things you're responsible for? Time management is something I'm working on. Would love insight. I absolutely hate using Asana or Notion or anything like that. My ADD does not do well with it. Um, I get too distracted on wanting to build like the prettiest Notion boards. <laughs> so I, I don't do that. Um, I have three notebooks and I write a lot of my stuff on these like all sorts 
of fun stuff. Um, I don't even keep those quite well organized, but that's my biggest thing is I just list and then I check things off. Um, but I'm also known for a lot of multitasking. And so a lot of what I do, like as I'm in meetings where people are saying things that are action items, I'll actually go in and create calendars, calendar events in my calendar with what that was. So it'll be like email Elkler back about this, this, and this. <laughs> and so I have that time dedicated. So that's like my biggest thing. Um, okay. I see my community is currently com comprised of senior level members who don't have the bandwidth to have regular synchronous meetings. Do you have any advice for methods of engagement? Uh, yes, but it's not an answer that people like because I am all about the things that don't scale and doing one-to-one -one time, um, make it asynchronously, make it as easy as possible for them to possibly engage with you. Um, and so fill out everything that you need and everything that, like you don't wanna bring anything to them that they could find online. And so you wanna make sure that you're filling everything out in whatever type of mode or medium that you want that conversation to happen. Uh, but once again, but still make it simplistic, which can be a very difficult mix um, and make sure that it's just really easy for them to be a part of um, because nobody has bandwidth anymore. Like <laughs> we're all fried, we're all exhausted. Um, so it's, it's tough. And even sometimes put yourself in their shoes of how could, like, what would I think if I got this, right? I think we all have those emails or those conversations sometimes where we're like, what the hell are they doing? Like, why would, <laughs> like, didn't you look at this? And so, um, so think about that ahead of time of like, how could they possibly respond? Um, and what is the response that I want? And if they don't align, then you may need to figure out a different way. But I would also ask them, what's the best way to communicate with them? Because some people have like different preferences on whether they want emails or LinkedIn message or inside the community app. So just consider that. Um, and then Jen, did you work in parallel to the launch to build community programs and a content calendar for engagement? Yes. So um, I am kind of holding off on community programs because it's a lot, like it's just so much. <laughs> Um, so right now I am leveraging our marketing events a lot more inside the community. Um, I do want to start ho hosting a few uh, programs and I do have them listed by quarter of in like months, even of what programs I want to start initiating and like why and the whens and all of that. Um, but to start, I have a content calendar, the event calendar, and then I've got a list of seed questions to help um, just kind of give our members an easy opportunity to, for an easy answer. Um, sometimes community members get really scared to reply. There are certain words that we use like, hey, RevOps pros. Well, not everyone thinks that they're a pro at RevOps. Sometimes they're just trying to get by. So I try and create questions and opportunities for them to come in and have an easy win. You know, sometimes we all just need that. So... <sighs> Ilker, all the things. Yeah, it's just, you know, there's, there's so much to, uh, there's so much to discuss, you know, or certainly, um, you know, one hour will never be enough to, uh, to discuss all the, all the matters of, uh, but you've, you've done, you've done a great attempt. I can tell you that that was just, just great. So um, thank you very much for sharing all these, uh, all these uh, amazing insights and uh, certainly are, uh, are reacting really well in the sense that this is something that uh, they needed. So once again, um, uh, when, you, when you're starting a community, you just need all the insights that you can get. You know, one of the things that I always said that, um, that said to myself was uh, how um, uh, cool it was for the uh, community professionals to share what they know. Because um, I think this was Brian in Before the Lock uh, podcast, which you've re referenced, um, uh, he did say in one of the podcasts that you know some of the th many of the things uh, that uh, the industry, uh, the community industry leaders, so to speak, um, they came up with all the methodologies and stuff. They were all sort of trial and error. Some of them were made up. Some of them were completely lifted from other industries and other um, you know uh, practices. And of course, uh, a good portion of them are. Um, Basically provided uh, as a as a as a mechanism uh, for other community professionals to use. So 
make best use of uh, Katie and us and all the experiences and all the things that we've shared. Um, you're not in this alone. You don't have to, uh, you know, just do this alone. So certainly, uh, you know, ask for feedback, ask for help, uh, join Slack, and of course, uh, you know, do uh, various, uh, you know, just basically just do just contact all the various people that you uh, think they can help you with. So um, we have another question, by the way, uh, from uh, Nisa. Hello, Nisa. We're planning to launch a community for the startup ecosystem, but I have concerns about confidentiality. Do you have any suggestions? So, Katie, what do you think? Um, really hope that there's no problems. <laughs> I know that's not an awesome answer by any means, um, but try and get as much approval from your GDPR folks as you possibly can. I'm sure there's someone in legal that can help around this. Um, we took everything to legal. Um, in Before the Lock, one of the things that they chat most about is your terms, that, your T's and C's, your terms and conditions. Um, make sure that you have that done ahead of time so you don't have to stress about it. Um, but I would pair my T's and C's with any type of legal confidentiality GDPR stuff. Um, so, so that's what that's what I would do. You've got to cover, got to cover your ass on that stuff because it can get uh, very nasty. But yeah, talk with your legal team, talk with your GDPR folks, uh, and kind of like walk through that process with them. Similarly, if you have a platform, make sure that your GDPR folks are a part of that conversation with your platform uh, vendors and figure out like what is the best for security and confidentiality. Um, focuses on that as well it's a great question it's really good fantastic and thanks for asking that question unfortunately we're right at the end of our time <laughs> so just, like, just like any international uh, sort of event it is uh, right in the middle of a working day in uh, some parts of the world such as katie's and that should be about 2 p.m in the afternoon um whereas in the evening it's for us at about 10 p.m in istanbul uh, where the two continents meet so uh, we just wanted to of course you know make you know take them take the least amount of your extra time so uh let me take this opportunity to thank katie first of all for uh, the great uh, tips that she's uh, she's shared and you know the kind time she's devoted to today uh for participating for sharing her insights and everything else and of course, uh, my dear co-hosts, um, uh, Jaren and Esra, who's with us, uh, they've, been, they've been around the chat, you may have encountered them. And of course, most important of all, it's you, the people who uh, take, took the mm -hmm. time to listen to us, to listen to what we have to say. Thank you, and we sincerely hope that we see you at another uh, CMX Connect Istanbul event. Katie, thanks very much once again. And, Thank uh, you. Appreciate y'all. And uh, I hope to, uh, you know, to see you at another feature event, another CMS Istanbul <laughs> event. Uh, certainly, I know that is, it's, it's always a pleasure. So the recording <laughs> of this event will be found on uh, the CMX Connect YouTube channel. So please give us a follow, a like. Make sure you connect with Katie. If you have any questions, she's more than happy to answer, as she said. Mm -hmm. So um, certainly it's been, a, uh, it's been a great event and uh, thanks again. And I shall be you know, ending the event in the next few minutes. So Katie, any, any last words? No, just appreciate y'all. And, and thank you, Ilker and the team for having me. So go jump to the next call, but I appreciate y'all. Thank you. All the very best to everyone. And thanks very much. And uh, see you later.